This is Pat Prescott, host of Favorite Things on WBGO. It's Black History Month, and we are celebrating the legacy of a living history maker. Roland Martin built his brand as a journalist and a TV host for CNN, MSNBC, and TV One. And he continues to educate, inform, and challenge the community and to contribute to the discussion of current issues and events in America and beyond. Roland joins us today to talk about the achievements he's most proud of, his Black media network, his new book, White Fear, and his nomination for the 54th NAACP Image Awards in the Outstanding News Information Series category for his Black Voters Matter 2022 election night coverage of the midterm elections on hashtag Roland Martin Unfiltered. Welcome, Roland. It's good to see you. Glad to be here. You know, during Black History Month, we so often uh, talk about our Black achievers of years gone by, but this year we thought we'd focus on people like you who have already created history and yet still continue to achieve and to innovate. Congratulations on your recent NAACP Awards nomination. Appreciate it. Appreciate How it. Many, th this is a lot for you. You've had a bunch of these. Uh, I, mean, I, won won four. Four, I won four, and I think I've been nominated 10 or 12 times. Yeah, that, that just shows the consistency in the work that you've been doing. And I know your experience is a little bit different from most honorees, uh, uh, nominees rather, because uh, you're there to see if you win, but at the same time, you are covering the event. You're working, <laughs> which of course, oh, yeah. is, <laughs> but this is the kind of work that got you the nomination in the first place. But what's that like doing that double duty? Um, I mean, it is interesting, um, especially when <coughs> you arrive there and you're walking the red carpet and then you turn right around and it's like okay i gotta walk this thing real quick i gotta go to work <laughs> uh so uh it's it's all it's always uh that's always a tr and then, but then also uh like i try to explain to people uh you don't just you're not actually attend just attending the show um what i mean by that is um you're actually working the room while you're doing it uh so you'll be sitting here and you know, they'll go to commercial break and then I'll hop up and I'm actually connecting with people. I remember um, probably the last last um, before before COVID hit. I remember, um, I saw Issa Rae and, and I'm always double checking with people. Look, people change their cell phones, all kinds of stuff like that real quick, which is which is a lesson to actually all journalists. Uh, most people say, oh, if I get somebody's cell phone. No, you get their email because they rarely change their email. Uh, and so, uh, so what I'll do is I'm, I'm always, uh, connecting with people, even that quick time being able to, uh, lock with somebody because for me, I don't, uh, it is no disrespect to publicists or business managers. Uh, but for me, it's about having the relationships directly with, uh, with the person. So whether it's a CEO, whether it's an entertainer, whether it's an athlete, uh, I don't like going through people. Uh, and so even this week, uh, what I do is with my show Rolling with Rolling, I do this series of one on one interviews that last about an hour. Uh, and, and all the people I connect directly with them, I have a list of like 50 people and I hit them direct. Mm -hmm. uh, now, after they say yes or whatever, then I'm dealing with, hey, courting with my people or so many of them, I would just court directly. And that's the thing that I'm always trying to explain to folks. Uh, you don't just get excited about, oh, my goodness, I'm in the room. And so it's Issa, it's Beyonce, it's Jay-Z, uh, it's this Kerry Washington. It's kind of like, no, no, no. Uh, it's, actually, it's also work. And so you're double checking, yo, there's still your cell phone. Hey, uh, who can I still connect with you? Because that's, that's how you build the relationships. And most people don't understand the art of building relationships uh, because they only see it as, oh, just when I need something, Will when I when Jada Pinkett Smith when she um, executive produced the um, Angela Davis documentary, uh, we were in New York. Will was coming down, and I was about to interview him. Say, hold on one second. He turns to the camera. Say, let me tell you about this guy. You know, he'll just hit you up to wish you a happy birthday or happy Father's Day or something along those lines. And so you have to, you have you have to get people to understand um, everything is not transactional. Uh, these are right. also human beings, and so it's 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 building. It's how do you build and how do you connect with people? Because I tell a lot of young journalists that all the time, they always come to me and they'll say, hey, I want to do what you do. I'm like, no, do you want to do what I did? And do you want to do what I do? And look at me like that, like I'm crazy. But I explain to them, you still have to put in the work. And I'm mm -hmm. saying, so when you say, I want to do what you do, what many of them are really saying is, I want to be recognized in airports. <laughs> I want to be, I want to get, I want to get invited to private parties. And I'm like, you know, but you don't understand those things don't happen if you don't do the work. That's and right. if you don't, if you don't do the work, then 
uh, you don't get the awards. And it's not even about the awards. It's really about, like I tell them all, it's, everything boils down to do you do the work? And I think the problem today is, is that we have people today who literally are famous or successful or well-known who literally do nothing. Yes, we've seen and, that. And, 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 and so <laughs> that is a, and so there are people who love that but I'm going, yeah, but uh, that's not uh, most people. And so, uh, yeah, so it, it's always a little bit interesting when, like I say, you're, you're on both sides where, where, you're, where you're treated as a celebrity, but then you are actually covering it. And so you got to just understand uh, that, uh, look, it comes with it. But at the end of the day, uh, it, it still boils down to um, um, getting the job done. Well, I think you hit the nail on the head. It's really about relationships. Your whole career is based on the relationships that you've made over the years. You know, yep. that people that, you know, know who, you know, it's not who you know, it's who knows you, you know. <laughs> they, yeah, it's weird. Call, so call, like, the, uh, like, the, uh, like the other day, it was crazy. Um, I, was, I, was, I was in Salt Lake at the NBA All-Star game. Mm -hmm. And there was a publicist who was nearby, uh, who worked for a company. And so um, Yakim Noah came by. And I said, Yakim, how you doing, Roland Martin? And, uh, and so he said, hey, man, that was a great question you asked this morning at the newsmakers uh, breakfast. And then it led to us talking. It led to us exchanging information. Right. And and she and so she uh, she goes, she says, uh, wow, you she says, you know, introducing yourself using the full name. And I told her, I said, listen, oh, I don't and I, told, <laughs> I don't assume. And people people go, Roland, it's you. I'm like, no, no, you don't understand. I said. I never make the assumption that I meet somebody, even if they're African American, that they already know who I am. So I always introduce myself as my name. Now, here's the thing I need people to understand. I don't introduce myself and there's something else at the end of my name. So there was a scene for the movie, The Insider, uh, which is about the 60, uh, 60 minutes of the tobacco hole uh, uh, controversy. Mm -hmm. And Al Pacino is playing a producer named Lowell Bergman. Uh, Real life producer, uh, who was Mike Wallace's producer at 60 Minutes. And there's a scene where he says, Lowell Bergman, 60 Minutes, I wonder if my calls get returned if that's not at the end of my name. And so, what I tell people is, my whole deal is, I'm not, I've never, I've never been Roland Martin CNN, Roland Martin TV One, Roland Martin Houston Defender, Dallas Weekly, Chicago Defender, uh, any of that. When I call, I'm me. And so I remember I called the White House the other day and they said, uh, I said, I'm Roland Martin. I said, I'm looking to speak to so-and-so. Uh, who are you with? I'm with Roland Martin. And they were like, uh, okay, yeah, but who are you with? I said, I'm with Roland Martin. <laughs> I'm like, let them know I'm on the phone and they'll exactly know who's on the phone. <laughs> and, the per the, and, and the person was like, uh, well, okay, but who are you with? I said, look, I said, I'm a journalist. I have my own network. Well, well, that's what I meant. I said, no, that ain't the same. And, and so people, and so, so, and so what that means is that means that no matter where you go, your calls get returned, your calls get answered and it doesn't matter who you're with. So a lot of other people though, for them, they need that calling card. And that's why I say you have to, you have to, you have to put in that work to create the relationships where they say, I trust you, not because I'm trusting CNN or TV one or Tom Jordan morning show. I'm trusting you. And that's something that a lot of people don't really understand. Well, you have developed a brand, which uh, a lot of people do trust. And uh, I would like to take some of the time we have left to talk a little bit about some of the history that you have been making. Uh, as recently as 2018, you made history when you created the first ever all digital daily show focused on political news and analysis, entertainment, sports, lifestyle, all of these things. You know, you have such a wide scope of, of areas that you know about. Uh, but you talk about it specifically from the African American perspective. Mm -hmm. What was the impetus for hashtag Roland Martin Unfiltered, and this whole, which has led to everything, the Black Star Network, and all the things that you're doing now? Um, it really, a lot of people don't realize that when I ran the Chicago Defender, um, I started the first uh, Black news source audio podcast in 2005, 
And then I started the first Black News Source video podcast in 2006. So, and I know somebody who's listening, they're like, wait a minute, this is 2023, precisely. <laughs> um, I was that far ahead of the game. And um, when I was, I went to communications high school. So we had a television station. So I did TV, radio, and newspapers. So I've never done one media. So I saw, I saw where we were going. And I embraced it early on. When I worked at the, when I went, when I was a City Hall reporter at the Fort Worth Telegram, a second job out of college, uh, we, had a, we had something called Star Text. Um, and it was, I'll never forget, you, I think we you had like 14 discs you had to like load into your computer to load the whole software. Uh, and it allowed you to see your stories online. And I was one of the first reporters there. And the other reporters, they were like, yeah, I don't know what they're doing. I was kind of like, no, no, no. What are they doing? So I would go with Jerry, and I would talk to him. And I was going, like, and I knew, I said, boom, this is where we're going. So I knew, I always knew that. The problem in the black space, whether you're talking black owned media, whether you're talking about black churches, typically they're 10 to 15 years behind in terms of where everyone else is. It's just from a technology standpoint. So I always knew the technology piece, where we were going. And so I was doing media convergence before there was even a, a phrase media convergence. Uh, where you where you would sometimes go to a story and you would shoot the video and then I can strip the audio off of the video now use the audio for radio then turn into a written exactly. story as well was doing it like literally 23 years ago 25 years ago and so that was the piece and so um, when I saw when I saw I also understood I studied I studied the business of the business and I and I and I was saying, yo, we've got to go digital. Once the TV one, the cable contracts would not allow us to actually. We had a limited amount of video we could put online because they wanted you to subscribe to cable to see TV one. But I also knew that's how we're gonna be able to grow an audience because the cable television new the news audience is old. I mean, it's in. I think we were like fifty six. Fox News, I think, is like sixty five, sixty seven. And I said we have to embrace the digital piece. And I really didn't. One thing, if I look back, it was really because we couldn't do it. But if look back, I wish I had gotten. I wish I was even more aggressive with my YouTube channel, even when I was at TV One, than I was. But you know, by lines, we, we couldn't. And that's when. So when TV One, um, a year before they ended the show, we were doing more stuff, more stuff. And I was like, and I kept saying, "Yo, we have to, we have to go digital." To build our audience, and so when Alfred Liggins said they were going to cancel the show, I didn't. I wasn't. I wasn't angry. wasn't upset. wasn't mad. Literally, while he was talking, I was planning. Like I'm talking about, I'm sitting in his office, and he's telling me my show's getting canceled, and I'm sitting there going, when I walk out of him, calling this person, this person, this person. I'm launching this show, and it's like what happened. The last day of our show, an hour late, after, an hour after the show was over, I was sitting in my first sponsor's office and 24 hours later, I had the first quarter of a million dollars advertising up for the show. So exactly. you don't, you don't. So the key is you don't wait until something ends to then go, okay, let's start. No, I was actually acquiring equipment, purchasing equipment. So when the show ended, I was sitting on almost a hundred thousand dollars worth of equipment. So I could just easily transition and I didn't need them for my infrastructure because I already owned it. So I already invested in, my, in myself. And plus, it's all a tax write off. So, again, it's 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 preparing for the moment, not waiting till, oh, I got to do it now. And then you do it. Yeah, that's true. Uh, these relationships have really worked out for you. I mean, you, and also your vision, uh, thinking ahead and being prepared for what's coming, I think, are part of the secret to your success. And we're excited about all the great things that are happening for you right now, um, including your deal with Amazon News. We'll be able to see your content there very soon. And um, in the time that we have left, I just want to ask you one other question. And yep. that is, the, the, all these things that you're doing, um, I think they're, the importance of them are really underscored by the attack on truth that we've seen going on yep. in this country in recent years. And I want you to just address that and uh, where, you know, as average people, finding someone who we can trust, I think is really important. And that goes back to those relationships that you talked yep. about and your years and years of being on the air and knowing that we can depend on you to call it like it is. I think those things are great, but just, just let's end with that talking about truth yeah. 
<laughs> hey, look, it, it is it is the it is the most fundamental and important thing. Um, uh, I've got, I've had a couple of videos that have I've had a lot of videos that have gone viral, but recently I've been a couple of videos that have gone viral where where I just tore apart two black Republicans. But I wasn't tearing them apart because of black Republican. It's because they were feeding me BS. And and so the thing and I and I called them out on the BS and people were like, damn, bro. I was like, yo, because I, I have a very simple philosophy. I don't care if you have a different opinion. You're not going to come on my show and lie. And the reason being, if you're listening and you're watching, and I don't even know who you are, and if someone says something and you don't hear me say anything, well, what then happens is you go, well, that, that, that must be true. Roland said nothing. There was no pushback. And so for me... I can't let a lie stand. Now interrupt. Why are you interrupting me? Now I'm gonna let you finish. What I'm not gonna do is let you lie. And that to me, I think, is the biggest problem I have with mainstream media. And I'm gonna go ahead and say it. Most of these TV anchors you're watching, they are not well-read people. They're not knowledgeable. And so for me, I'm fact-checking you in real time. I'm I don't have a producer in my ear feeding information. It's not like, oh, we're going to come back tomorrow and then tell you, well, we interviewed so-and-so yesterday, and this was a, a half-truth. This No, I'm going to fact-check you in real time because I can't let the lie stand. And what people have to understand is that when something also happens, yes, you got to say, Yo, that person has a track record of being right, so therefore I'm going to listen to them. And so that's where the work comes in. So when Newsweek did a cover story that Biden cut $35 billion from HBCUs, it was a lie. And people were posting that. And I actually called two prominent activists. I said, take that crap down. You are posting a lie. And I said, don't you post anything dealing with HBCUs again from somebody else unless you call me first. And so what happens now, there are, there are black people, I, I can't give names, but there are black people who are in the activist world who are in the entertainer world, uh, who are in the business world, they will see something and be like, yo, Ro, I saw this. Is this true? I've run it by you before I say something. Um, and, in fact, and in fact, it's funny, Commissioner Adam Silver and I had a conversation a few years ago, and he said that you know a lot of, a lot of NBA players call him and they want to they want advice on a lot of these social issues. And he's like, I, I really can't give it to him. He said, so Roland, um, could I give them your number if it called me? I was like, absolutely. And that's actually what happens. I mean, there are people who uh, they'll hit me up and like, hey, man, uh, you know, we, we're going to say something. We want to make sure that, <laughs> that we're right. right. <laughs> and they'll call me and I'll be like, yo, bro, that, you, you know, that's wrong. <laughs> or, yes, let me give you the backstory. Let me connect you with somebody else. Uh, and, and I'm talking about it's it's a number of people, and, and that's what it boils down because they say, "Man, look, I trust you." I mean, like I said, I'll get a phone call and it'll be like, "Hey, Ro, this is pissing me off, but man, I don't know what's up. Lead, lead me down the right path." And 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 so, and again, that's where the personal integrity comes in when people trust you enough to say, and these are people who are very prominent people, I trust you. And then I trust if you're going to give it to me straight. And so, and again, but that's the work. And you yeah. don't get that. You don't get that because you all oh, got some following. No, you get it because you've been right a lot. Yeah. And so we say, gotcha. Well, what we want you to do is to keep asking those tough questions. And oh, yeah. It's going to happen. Person, and being that person that we could uh, depend on. I always thought that the name of your, your show and the network and stuff is just so perfect because you are unfiltered. <laughs> and I just hope that you continue to be. We want you to long, follow. As long, long, long as I got breath, I'm good. <laughs> Congratulations on your NAACP Image Award nomination. All the great work that you're doing. We'll be checking you out on Amazon News and, of course, at the hashtag Roland Martin Unfiltered. And they can also just download, they, they can download my Black Star Network app as well on all devices. Thanks so yep. much for spending some time with us. Appreciate today. it. All right, take care.